for my mother's cancer she survived for 24 years like full healthy so i am not at all scared of that disease as such only the treatment may be little tough but that is there with any treatment so i'll come to know like you know what is my genetic testing results i am not optimistic maybe if it is negative then i may be like happy but otherwise i am like uh, like you know almost 90% sure that it is in my family Human Wide is a pilot that we are conducting in a primary care clinic in Santa Clara. We at that clinic have also implemented a team-based care model which we think is going to help us transform what we're doing in primary care. The focus of Human Wide is to consider how can we leverage the best of the art and science of medicine that we have at Stanford and across the country and the world. Technology, genomics, uh, diagnostics, how do we leverage that so that we are are uh, focusing on prevention and proactive care to prevent disease before it strikes. I am Jayasree Pulle. I am from India. So I am in US for the last six years. And um, like I'm working, I'm working as an IT consultant, SAP consultant. And I have a daughter. Her name is Gavdi. My mother had cancer almost 24 years back. She started as a breast cancer and she was only 38. But after five years again, she got ovarian cancer. And then every five years, it tend to repeat in some form or the other. Then she got this peritoneal cancer. Before real pain, actually she could. I mean, she went into coma and then she passed away. So it was in last September. My daughter got leukemia like when she was 10 years old, almost two years back. It's like a high risk one, the chances of relapsing is more. So they did a bone marrow transplant. Now she's doing fine, perfectly fine. She started going to school this year and she's doing good in school. I wanted to know like whether my daughter got it is because of some genetic thing. Because some people like, you know, when she got sick, they will used to come and console me. Oh, maybe because your mother also had. You know, you feel sad, like, you know, is it because I am past that gene to my daughter? So, like, you know, I wanted to know that. <laughs> Genetics is testing for different genetic polymorphisms or alleles in your genetic code that predict differences in the disease risk that you might have for heart disease or cancer. Your genetic code is in every cell of your body. It's in your blood cells. It's in the epithelial cells of your mouth. You can put a cotton swab in your mouth, scrape the side of your mouth, and send it off to a lab, and we can check your genetic code. And we can sequence all of the base pairs and see if there's any differences in the code that have been related in studies to having increased risk of cancer. Which means for us as providers that we want to watch you a little more closely so that we can prevent disease well ahead of time. So let's start with you and your own medical history. So you're 39 now, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Okay. And I saw in your medical record you have hypothyroid. Yes. Okay. yes. Do you have any other medical conditions? Uh, me, myself, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like on your mom's side of the family, there's nobody else who's had breast cancer. Nobody immediate. But if you see my mm -hmm. grandmother's sister, two sisters has got cancer. Uh, okay. What kind of cancers? Like one was breast, one was in the like uh, colon cancer. So when we first learned about some of these cancer genes, what we actually learned about was something called BRCA1 and 2, which you've heard about. These are the most common examples of a gene that causes breast and ovarian cancer, and they do kind of go together. All of us have two copies of every single one of these genes. So mm -hmm. you have two copies of BRCA1, I do as well. You have two copies of BRCA2, I do as well. 
the way that these genes work is they're like your instruction book for how your body works. Mm -hmm. So almost like a cookbook. So you can imagine if you had a cookbook and someone made a major typo on a recipe, your recipe might not turn out how you would want it to, right? Maybe okay. you add twice as much milk as you're supposed to mm -hmm. or um, leave out the eggs or something like that. Your end product is going to be different. And genes work the same way. They tell our body how to make things and how to function. And so if a gene isn't working properly, that can increase your chance, for example, of cancer. Okay, mm -hmm. so what we're actually doing in these genetic tests is reading out every letter, almost like a spell checking program. Mm -hmm. If we see a difference from what we expect, then we look in a database and we see, is this a, a change that I know causes a risk for cancer? So your mom, having had breast cancer at less than 50 and ovarian cancer, the chance that she actually has a BRCA1 and 2 mutation is about 40%. So your chance that we're going to find something on this test is about 20%. And that your lifetime risk of breast cancer is around 30%. The other thing I'll just point out is that because both of these numbers are above 20%, mm -hmm. I will make a note in your medical record that you should probably be getting screened with the alternating breast MRIs and mammograms every six months. Okay. Just for caution's sake. Okay. 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 Regardless of these test results. My mother got cancer when I was only 15 years old. She survived for 24 years. For me, having Stanford and like you know good medical facilities here, I I don't really worry about cancer like you know as something which will kill me or something soon. But the treatment definitely like you know I feel it is very tough. And even my daughter survived and I could see her like you know happy dancing. Still like you know when you hear or you, when I am waiting for the result, I am actually. Like a little nervous, so there will be some period where, like you know, I have to face it. See, now I am like going to be 39, 40. So my mother got it when she was 38. So now I could feel that pain, like you know, when like her hair was gone. How difficult it was. Even same thing for my daughter. Like she used to love her hair. I am not bothered about my hair or anything, but she used to love her hair. And when they lose that, it is difficult. Her cancer kept on repeating. Like, you know, she will be fine for five, six years, and then... <laughs> Hello, yeah, I'm Jay Sri here. Hi, this is Dr. Polly. I've been calling from Stanford. Is this a good uh, moment? Yeah, sure. I wanted to go over the results of the genetic testing that you did a few weeks ago. Yeah, okay. Um, so good news. I wanted to let you know, first of all, that you are negative for BRCA1 and 2, which is wonderful news, given your family history. Okay, thank you, Dr. Grill. That's a great news. Great. And we've also uh, checked for many other uh, mutations, um, and they were all negative. Genetic testing is no longer inaccessible due to high prices, and we can integrate it into what we do in primary care. It's really going to help us define the future of medicine. We'll be able to identify cancers before they even affect a person, just like we do for pap smears, just like we do for prenatal testing for our babies. We'll be testing everyone for the three conditions that we know we can have an impact on. That would include colon cancer, breast and ovarian cancer, and hypercholesterolemia, and then have an impact on a patient's health in a way that we haven't been able to before.